EIGRP stands for Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. It is an advanced distance vector routing protocol. It is sometimes referred to as hybrid routing protocol because it has characteristics of both distance vector and link state routing protocol. EIGRP replaced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, that is IGRP, an older proprietary Cisco routing protocol. EIGRP was also a proprietary protocol, but Cisco decided in 2013 to convert it into an open standard. This routing protocol is mostly used on Cisco devices and all routers in the network must support it. Following are the features of EIGRP. Support for classless routing and VLSM. Routes can be summarized on any router in the network. Incremental updates. Support for load balancing and MD5 authentication. EIGRP uses Cisco Reliable Transport Protocol that is RTP to send messages and uses multicast address of 224.0.0.10. The default administrative distance of EIGRP is 90, which is less than the default administrative distance of RIP and OSPF, which means that EIGRP routes will be preferred over RIP and OSPF routes. The metric is calculated using bandwidth, delay, reliability and load. By default, only bandwidth and delay are considered when calculating the metric while reliability and load are set to zero. EIGRP neighbors. Routers that run EIGRP must become neighbors before exchanging routing information. To dynamically discover neighbors on the directly attached network, EIGRP routers use the multicast address of 224.0.0.10 to send hello packets every couple of seconds. To become neighbors, the following parameter must match on both the router. ASN, that is autonomous system number, K values and subnet. Let us examine each of these parameters in detail. ASN or autonomous system number. EIGRP uses the concept of autonomous system. An autonomous system is simply a group of EIGRP enabled routers that should become EIGRP neighbors and exchange routes. An AS is defined on a router by using the router EIGRP AS number global configuration command. In order to become neighbors, all router must be configured with the same AS number. Subnet. Interfaces on both routers must be on the same subnet. K value. Each router must be configured with the same K value used to calculate the metric. By default, the only parameters used to calculate an EIGRP metric are bandwidth and delay. If a network administrator wants to use other parameters that are load and reliability to calculate a metric, the change has to be made on both router. Otherwise, the mismatched K value will prevent routers to become neighbors. Consider the following example. We have a simple network of two router. Both routers are running EIGRP with the AS ASN of 1. Because the interface on both routers are in the same subnet and the K values match, the routers will become neighbor. The information about EIGRP neighbors are stored in the neighbor table. We can display the content of this table by running the command show IP EIGRP neighbors. EIGRP table. Each EIGRP router uses this to store routing information. Neighbor table stores information about EIGRP neighbors. Before exchanging routes, routers need to establish a neighbor, neighbor relationship. Information such as the IP address of the neighbor, the local interface on which the hellos were received, the hold down timer, and the smooth round trip time are kept in this table. Topology table stores routing information learned from neighbor routing table. This table stores every EIGRP route inside the autonomous system the topology table also holds the metric for each of the listed EIGRP route, the feasible successor and the successor. Routing table stores only the best route to reach a remote network. Consider the following example. We have a network of three routers all running EIGRP. The routers have established neighbor relationship and the route have been exchanged. Let's display the neighbor table on R1 using the show IP EIGRP neighbors command. 
you can see that R1 has established two neighbor relationship. This information such as neighbor's IP address, the local interface, the hold down timer are displayed. Now let's display the topology table on R1 using the show IP EIGRP topology command. We will explain the concept of successor and feasible successor in the next section. For now, just remember that the table contains all routes learned by EIGRP. Notice how there are two possible routes to the 172.16.0.0/16 network, one via 10.0.0.2 and other via 192.168.0.2. Reported and feasible distance. In EIGRP, a local router calculates the metric for each route, but also considers the next hub router's metric for the same destination subnet. These metrics have their own name, reported distance or advertised distance. The metric advertised by the neighboring router for a specific route. This is the metric of the route used by the neighboring router to reach that specific destination network. Feasible distance. The local router's metric of the best route to reach a specific network. The metric is calculated using the metric reported by the neighbor plus the metric to the neighbor reporting the route. The route with the lowest feasible distance will be placed in the routing table. Let us see this with an example. We have a small network of two routers. Both routers are running EIGRP and the neighbor relationship has been established. R2 is directly connected to the 192.168.0.0/24 subnet and advertises that subnet using EIGRP to R1. The R2's metric to reach that network is 5120. R1 will use that metric to calculate its own metric to reach the 192.168.0.0/24 subnet. The values are stored in the R1's topology table. Notice the number in parentheses. 5376-5120, the first number that is 5376 represents feasible distance, the metric of R1 to reach the 192.168.0.0. The second number 5120 represents the advertised distance, the metric of R2 to reach that subnet. Successor and feasible successor. Two terms that you will often encounter in EIGRP world are Successor and feasible successor. Here are the definition of these two terms. Successor, the route with the best metric to reach a particular network. This route will be placed in the routing table of the router. Feasible successor, alternative routes to a particular network that can be used immediately if the best route, that is the successor fails, without causing a routing loop. These routes are stored in the EIGRP topology table. Not all alternative routes to a particular network will become a feasible successor. In order for a route to become a feasible successor, the following condition must be met. The neighbor's advertised distance, that is AD, for the route must be less than the successor's feasible distance. The definition can be more easily understood with an example. We have a network of five routers, all running EIGRP. R5 has advertised the 10.0.0.0/24 subnet R1 has three paths to reach the 10.0.0.0/24 subnet The first is R2 to R5 Let's say that this is the best route the successor route This route will be placed in R1's routing table with the metric of 30 The second route is via R3 to R2 to R5 For a route to become a feasible successor the neighbors advertise distance for the route must be less than the successor's feasible distance. This is not the case here. R3 has advertised the metric of 50 to reach 10.0.0.0/24, which is greater than the feasible distance of R1, that is 30. The third route is R4 to R5. This route will become a feasible successor since R4's advertised distance is less than the successor's feasible distance. 25 is less than 30. This route will be placed in R1's topology table and can be used immediately if the best route, that is the successor route, fails. Now let us see a practical for EIGRP. In the given example, there are four end devices connected to a switch which in turn are connected to router. No IP configuration has been done on either of the devices. So let's go ahead and configure IP addresses on the end devices first. 
for PC0 and PC1, the default gateway is gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 of router 1. And the router 1 is part of two networks, the 10 network and 20 network. So let's go ahead and configure PC0. IP configuration, the IP address is 10.0.0.1 with default subnet mask and gateway is 10.0.0.3. Similarly for PC1, the IP address is 10.0.0.2 with default subnet mask and gateway is 10.0.0.3. For PC3 and PC4, the default gateway is gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 of router 3. And router 3 is part of two networks, 20 network and 192.168 network. Let's go ahead and configure PC3 and PC4. 192.168.0.1 with default subnet mask and gateway is 192.168.0.3. PC4. 192.168.0.2 with default subnet mask and gateway is dot three. We have configured IP addresses on all the end devices. Let's go ahead and configure IP addresses on both the routers. For router one, we'll first go to enable mode, and configuration mode. First, we'll configure IP address on interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 which is the default gateway for router 1 this interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 where IP address is 10.0.0.3 with default gateway default subnet mask and no shut to bring the interface up now the other interface which is on the WAN side that is interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 IP address now this is on the 20 network 20.0.0.1 with default subnet mask and no shut command to bring up the interface and exit similarly for router 3 Router 3 is part of two networks, the 20 network and the 192.168 network. So Router 3, we'll go to enable mode, and then configuration mode, interface, gigabit, zero slash zero slash one, IP address of 192.168.0.3, with default subnet mask and no shut command to bring up the interface now the other interface on the WAN side interface gigabit 000, 000. IP address is 20.0.0.2 with default subnet mask and no shut command to bring up the interface. So till now we have configured IP addresses on all the interface. So let's go ahead and try to ping from PC0 to PC3 and see if the ping is going through. Now let's try from PC1 to PC3. Ping 192.168.0.1 which is the IP address of PC3 and we get destination host unreachable because we did not configure any routing protocols on any of the router. So let's go ahead and configure EIGRP on both the router. Now router 1 is part of two networks, the 10 network and 20 network. So we'll have to specify both the route, both the networks on the router 1. Go ahead and The command is router EIGRP and one is the AS number. You can put any number here. So we'll put one. Specify the network first. Network 10.0.0.0 and the other network is 20. That is 20.0.0.0. And do write 
to save the configuration. Similarly, for router 3, router 3 is part of two networks, the 20 network and 192.168 network. Router EIGRP, make sure the AS number is the same, which was on router 1, so as to form neighborship. Network 20.0.0. You can see the message that the neighborship has been formed. And network 192.168.0.0 and do right that's it now we have configured eigrp on both the routers and from router 3 we did see that a neighborship has been formed with router 1 let's go ahead and try to ping pc3 from pc1 and see if we can reach ping 192.168.0.1 which is the IP address of PC3 the first packet is dropped because the devices are building their ARP cache that is why we got request timeout now if we try again we won't get a request timeout similarly let's try from PC4 to PC0 And dot zero dot zero dot one is the IP address of PC zero. As stated, the first packet would be dropped because the devices were creating the ARP cache. Now, if we try again, it won't. We won't get a request timeout. So that's how we configure EIGRP on our network. Now, if you want to see the neighbors of a particular router, let's say for router 3, if you want to see who, what is the neighbor of router 3, we can use the command show IP EIGRP neighbors. And here we can see that the neighbor is 20.0.0.1 connected by the interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0. The uptime of the neighbor. Now, if you want to see the feasible distance from your router, you can just go to and type the command show IP EIGRP topology. And here we can see what is the, who is the successor and what is the feasible distance to reach. So that's how we configure EIGRP on a small network. Thank you. Reliable transport protocol. EIGRP sends messages without UDP or TCP. Instead, a Cisco's protocol called Reliable Transport Protocol or RTP is used for communication between EIGRP speaking routers. As the name implies, reliability is a key feature of this protocol and it is designed to enable quick delivery of updates and tracking of data reception. Five different packet types are used by EIGRP. The first one is update, contains route information when these are sent in response to metric or topology changes, reliable multicast are used in the event that only one router needs an update like when a new neighbor is discovered, it's sent via unicast. The second is query, a request for specific routes and always uses the reliable multicast method. Routers send queries when they realize that they have lost a path to a particular network and are searching for alternative path. Reply sent in response to a query via unicast method. Replies can include a specific route to the query destination or declare that there is no known route. Hello. Used to discover EIGRP neighbor, it is sent via unreliable multicast. No acknowledgement is required here. The final one is acknowledgement. Sent in response to an update and it is always unicast. Acknowledgements are not sent reliably.